This is the Ross Developers Podcast, episode 94. The Ross Developers Podcast, the Ross Developers. Ross Developers and welcome to the Ross Developers Podcast, the program, the podcast that gives you insights from the experts about how to program your robots with Ross. This is Ricardo from The Construct and today then, well, I'm going to continue with the series that we are doing about how to build your own robotics startup. So, this episode is dedicated to you if you are thinking about building your own robotics startup. So, if you are not, maybe you are thinking about, or maybe you are in the process. So, any case, this episode is dedicated to you. And in previous episodes, we have talked previously about how to build your own team, And then also on the on the first one we talk about how to get the idea for your product for your startup. Then in this case, the third I would consider the third more important point to talk about that is about how to get some money to start your startup. Right? So um, we have now an, an idea, it's a very cool idea for a robotics product. And we have assembled a team to build it. Then the only thing that remains is to have some money to start buying the required parts, the computers, the software, or anything else that we may need to build the product. Then also the team that is building it, maybe is going to need some payment or not. That depends on how you organize this, uh, the development of the product. Uh, and uh, maybe you will need to subcontract any service, like, for example, designing uh, some parts of your product that need to be designed by somebody else who is an expert on that. Or maybe you will need also to go visiting some places to promote your product, to create uh, arrangements or partnerships. Uh, in, for all that, you're going to need money. And the beginning, at the beginning is always very difficult for a startup because the product still has not been built and you cannot generate money. So there is kind of a circle because you cannot create a product because you don't have any money that is being generated. So you don't generate any money and you don't generate any money because you don't have a product. Then how to break that circle so you can start actually then let's see how t- you can do that here in this episode then the first thing that you need to understand well is that the in, in order to get some money okay so the first thing that you ne- thing that you need to understand is that ideas are worthless yes So that's the one of the main points when creating a startup. Uh, maybe you have seen all those movies about entrepreneurs that they go to a panel of investors, present their idea, and then everybody gets excited about the idea they proposed. And then, oh well, yeah, I want to invest uh, the money that you need. And this is very far from reality. The, the point here is that you are not going to get money from investors based on your idea because ideas are worthless. There is the very common misconception about the value of ideas. And, and I myself, I had this when I started my company. Yes, I also myself, I have it. But now I understand that... Uh, so... I have seen several times people that says, uh, hey, I have a very cool idea for a startup. Then I will tell you the idea, 
you implement it, and then we share the ownership, uh, like a 50-50. And <laughs> this situation is, is very unrealistic because uh, it, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the idea is very cool. I'm not judging the coolness of the idea or the revolutionary what that is this idea i'm not judging this but it doesn't matter how cool and how revolutionary what really matters is the implementation of the ideas that is the difficult part the difficult part is to bring into reality an idea everyone everyone has very cool ideas Really, yeah, I can see in every day people that says ideas they expose some ideas and say, "Wow, that's very cool. That you 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 are very uh, clever in that sense." Um, I remember as an example many years ago, many many years ago, there there it didn't exist the iPhone. Okay, so think at that time, even before that. So uh, I don't know if you remember the concept of disc man. Those these men were those uh, those things that you can put a CD containing twenty four songs at most twenty four songs, and then you carry the CD player with the CD in order to listen to music when you are moving around. Only twenty four at most. <laughs> so imagine how many can we carry now in our iPhone? Well, at that time. That was the standard. So one friend of mine told me about the idea of making a disman that can read MP3. Because it was starting the MP3 uh, format to be popular. Then he says, oh, wait a second. I have this idea. We can create a disc that instead of reading the normal CD format, it will read MP3. So we can carry hundreds of songs on a, on a disc. And I, I thought that was, idea was amazing. Of course, he didn't put this idea into implementation and somebody else did it and won a lot of money. And uh, one of those was Sony, for example. Then uh, so that what that means is the power of implementation. I can tell you this. This what I'm going to tell you. This is truth. My brother, he had the idea of an Airbnb just years before it existed. Actually, he was going to call it Travelissimo. Such a cool name, right? <laughs> Well, anyway, he, he told me about that and he had even the, the, the idea of how he's going to organize, but he never took the step to start building it. I myself, I had the idea of a phone application for dates with your locals, but even before we had internet in the phone. So the idea was to create a local hotspot that you would communicate with people close enough to, that, uh, to the Wi-Fi range. And I was going to call it Ligotin. The Spanish uh, listeners will understand the joke there. Well, of course, I didn't implement anything. And now I'm not millionaire, of course. <laughs> so what I want to express with all this is that ideas per se, they are worthless. What really matters of one idea is the implementation of it. You, you can get tons of good ideas. And I have seen many people saying very, very good ideas. But what matters is to bring those ideas into reality. That's super difficult. Then, because of that, investors know that, that bringing ideas into reality is very difficult. So they are not going to invest in your idea. Unless you show them some results. So unless you, you, so you cannot go with your idea to one investor and request him for money based on the idea. You can start implementing your idea and then 
get results and go with those results to the investors and show and say, hey, look here, I have some results. And I think that this is showing that we are going to have a huge success. But for having a huge success, we need the money. Then they will invest. That's the way of doing it. So investors are not going to invest in your idea unless unless you have already done in the past. So in the past, you had another startup and you demonstrated already that you are able to bring an idea into a billion dollar business. Then, of course, they are going to give you the money in that case. Or another case is when you have personal connections like... Um, this case of the uh, of this uh, lady that was building the, uh, Theranos, yes, the company is Theranos, for example, like the Theranos case that she got a lot of millions because they, they has some connections on that. Then, okay, so but this having so knowing about that investors are not going to give us any money yet, then. This brings us back to the initial point that we don't have money now. So how do we show them before they can start uh, letting us, uh, lending us some money or, or giving us some money? Then we need to show something. But again, we don't have money. So how can we create something to show? We have already 11 minutes of the podcast and still don't know this anything about how to break that circle okay so let's go to that point one you, you have some options okay to do this here one of the options the typical one uh, sorry no not the typical one let me go to the one one of the options is to uh, do your startup as a side project and that means that you and your co-founders do have a, another job that is the one that pays your bills for house, for food, for transportation, etc. And also you use some part of this money to pay your required materials for your startup, your travels, and anything that you need on the startup. That's having your startup as a side project of your main job. At the beginning, actually, uh, at the construct, we, we work that way. Each one of the co-founders, we have another job that paid our bills. And we, we were working this way until we built our first minimum viable product. The problem that you have in this approach is that let you very little time, very a short amount of time to work on your startup. You have to deliver at your job, at your main job, and then when you have finished that, then you have to go and work to the other one. I can tell you that this is exhausting. The problem is not that it's exhausting because welcome to the startup world. The startup world is you are going to work a lot and be exhausted if you want to to, if you want to achieve, to bring your idea into reality. And so that's not a problem. But, but the problem is that you have very few hours to work on to your startup. So that means that your startup will move very slowly. And if that is okay with you, maybe you and your founders and your idea, you think that it's okay. So you don't need to go faster because uh, so nobody is going to to try to overpass you. So try to implement the same idea, but a faster pace. Then in that case, then this approach is okay. But in robotics, it's almost never the case. If you take too much time developing something, then somebody else will appear with the same product idea and take you out of the business because even before you have the minimum viable product. So at the construct, as I mentioned, we started this way, but after a few months working like that, and once we have published our first, first minimum viable product, by the way, it was a complete disaster, but then at that point we decided that we needed to do more work and move faster, 
And then each one of us, we left the jobs and started to work uh, for just for the company, for the construct. Then in order to do that, we had to move to one of the first financing stages of any startups, which is getting money from fools, friends and family, the three F's. In this stage, that means that you are going to ask for money to all the people around you that loved you and that they are going to support you whatever they do, whatever you do, sorry, and including yourself. I mean, uh, also, you are going to grab all the money that you have uh, reserved, that you have saved in the, in the previous years. And, uh, so... This means putting the savings of you and your co-founders have, asking money to your close family, like parents, brothers, lovers, and asking money to those friends that would do whatever for you. Yes. <laughs> Poor fools. Poor fools. Okay, so that's why it's called fools, friends, and family, the three Fs. Then once you have this money, then you are going to use it to build a minimum viable product as a proof of concept that your idea is going to work. And by work, I don't mean in the engineering sense. Okay, you, so I know you are engineers as me. And when something works, it's because it works in the engineering sense. Okay, the computer works because it opens and then I can... Uh, connect to internet and so on. That's not what I mean by the idea is working. What I mean is, is, uh, is that the problem is that it should work in business terms. That means somebody is willing to pay for it and actually is, go is willing to pay enough to build a sustainable business. Okay, so so first let's, uh, I, I don't want to press too much. So let's say that you find people that is willing to pay for it. Even if it's not enough for, to sustain your business, that's okay so far at this, at this stage. But you should, should aim at that. Build a product that others want to buy at a reasonable price. That is for what you are going to use the money to build this minimum product that some people, not much, many people, doesn't. it's not necessary to have a lot of people buying it, but enough people to demonstrate that this is going in the good directions. So chances are that your first iteration of, the, of this minimum viable product is not going to work, like it happened to us, to the construct. So you will have to iterate, and that means uh, modify it, and then try again, and and then see the results. If they are not good, then modify it again, and try it again to put it into the market, and so on. And all this iteration process is a process that we will detail how to do it in future episodes. But basically, and at this stage, you are doing this process, and for that, you are using the money that you, you got from the three Fs. So you will have to take all the process and the iterations when you are planning for that money. So that means that maybe you are going to need to have a lot of iterations and you don't know how many beforehand. So maybe it's one, maybe a hundred. We don't know. We don't know because it's a process of finding the product that is interesting for the for the audience, for the uh, for the market out there. So, because you don't know that at that point, you will have to save as much as possible from that initial money that you have. This initial money is the one that is is your life. So it's your life. It's like if you are in a boat. And then you don't know in the middle of the ocean and you don't know how much time is going to pass until you get rescued. And then you have a, a bag of food. Then that's the situation with the money. 
That's how you had to treat the, your money, that money. And actually, we would say that the startup life consists on the search of a sustainable business model by means of iterations. Until you find that good spot of selling or you run out of money. Like you be, then you die. <laughs> then you, at that point, you die. So until you don't reach a point that you can show to somebody and demonstrate that your idea is, and the implementation of your idea is good. So they, you can, you can convince them to give you more money. Then that's your situation. That's your situation. Then, um, so you have to manage very, very well the, the money that you have uh, obtained from the three Fs. In case that you reach that point, so you build something like a prototype or and sometimes it's less than a prototype. It's a minimum viable product, what it's called a minimum viable viable product. This I will show you in another episode. I think it's the next one. And how to build that and what do I mean by this concept. But it's something that is showing that, A, here there is market. Here there is traction. There is people interested. Okay, so if you reach that point that you can feel this traction, this interest, then you can go to the next point, which is a seed round for a startup from a business angel. But uh, before going into that point, let's imagine that you are you have very bad luck and you spend all the money and you have reached no point that, where you can show some traction. Then what can you do at that point? Should you close? Well, it depends on you. You can close your startup and then apologize to all those who lend you the money, or you can search for an accelerator. The accelerators are some physical places, physical places that give you that give to startups a small amount of money to keep them moving into the search of this minimum viable product that is successful. And they also provide space to work and mentoring from experts of experts in the sense of building startups. Again, I'm not talking experts about robotics. Okay. Then, uh, so they call accelerators because they provide you all those resources so you can move faster your idea to the point that it of generating a minimum viable product that works. So in exchange, they usually request a percentage of your company and, well, the amount of money that they, that they give and the percentage that they take, the, it depends on the accelerator. But typical, for example, uh, the, oh, let me tell you one example. The one of the, one of the mo most famous accelerators in the world, which is called, called Y Combinator, and a super famous accelerator. It's uh, located in the States, and it has, for example, accelerated companies like Dropbox, Stripe, Airbnb, Twitch, or Reddit. So I'm sure that you know all of them. So they started there at Y Combinator, and they are investing 100 $15,000 for a 7% of the company. And they put you a lot of mentors and they, well, they, the process is, is very cool. So actually is, is one of the best in the world. And every year they have two entry points that you can apply, but a lot, a lot of startups are applying. So it's a difficult process. Actually, you have to have even there you have to have some people that recommend you before getting into uh, entering into the accelerator so it's very it's very difficult to get into there so then my advice is i, I do not recommend to go to the accelerators unless you are applying to a y combinator or something similar 
or unless you are very desperate and you are very desperate, you really believe your idea could fly and then you need the money. So you are going to grab anything that you have around. And the reason why I don't recommend it because in the, is because in the last years, you can find many, many accelerators. So actually more accelerators than Starbucks, I think. And there is one on every corner. And usually they don't provide any good service, just a space to stay and a little money, little amount of money. So the acceleration is almost uh, non-existent. It's more like just a survival kit and, and that's all. Because for me, by, uh, by acceleration, I mean a team of experts ready to guide you, uh, spot your false assumptions and errors, and also point you towards more successful directions, like it's happening in the Y Combinator. Uh, but there's basically the accelerators, the, no, the all those new accelerators they have started in the recent years. They basically just want to get some part of the company for a little amount of money and free space that you share with some other startups. Okay, so it's not just for you. Well, that's my opinion, but you can. You, you can experience by yourself. Okay, so if you go to one accelerator, then you will lose some part of your company. Then, uh, so let's say now that either you achieve with the full friends and family money, you achieve to create something that, that shows progress, traction, and acceptance by the market, or by means of the accelerator, you achieve the same thing, same point, then what's the next one? The next one is to go for business angels. The business angels are the ones that invest a small amount of money in your startup after they see some possibilities of success, but always by means of your minimum viable product and your results that you are presenting that can be checked. So they, they will need you a practical demonstration that your product can make millions in the long run. Okay, so business angels are usually individuals with a lot of money that is belongs to themselves. This money is their money. And they want to be part of a project. It's a project that they like and they think that it can be successful and then they can put their you know, their, their, their hand into that project. So they have to like the project usually. And then also the, the project has to, the startup has to demonstrate some success. That's one very, very clear example of this is Elon Musk. He was an, a business angel of Tesla. He invested his own money in the early stages of Tesla. Then what happened afterwards, and so it's not a story, but uh, yeah, so that's an example of business angel. And this stage, when somebody is a business angel is investing into your idea, then this is uh, called like a seed round, seed round, seed round of investment. In general, business angels will also provide a lot of mentorship and guidance. Um, also, they will provide your, their contacts and their experience in building companies. They are putting directly their personal money. And for that, they want to be, be part of the, of the team of the project in some way okay so they they get a small amount of the company also and the amount of money invested it may be between 50,000 and 200,000 depends on the investor and also of the project the idea then with this money is that you use the money to go beyond the minimum viable product and show that there is real traction in your product so you're going to it's not a minimum viable product but a full product that you are building and there is a lot of people that would like to buy it 
okay, so so you have to achieve this. That they a lot a lot of people is wanting to buy it, even show that if you have more money, then it will be sold even more. And that's exactly the result that investors are willing to see. It is, you have a product that you can demonstrate that people love, that they like it, and that you cannot start putting this into the market uh, massively because you like more of money. But your product is already demonstrating that it has this potential. Okay, that, then at that point is when you go to investors in order to ask them money. But uh, let me clarify that when I say about uh, that your product is selling a lot now at this point, I don't just I don't mean just to sell by interchange of money. So I also mean about traction. That means getting the, uh, the people is interested into enrolling maybe into your into your service even if it is free. But you have to be able to engage a lot of people. Why? Because that, that, that's very interesting for the, to the investors because that usually means that at some point in time in the future, you will be able to convert all those people into money by selling them something. For example, for example that's what happened to Google. So Google lived many years with money from the investors without producing any decent revenue. But they were engaging a lot of people. Talking, I'm talking here about millions, okay? Then, at some point in time, one of the employees of Google got the idea of the Google Ads uh, system. This, uh, this system, which is called the actions for the ads. And uh, that's what made them explode in terms of revenue. Okay, but when they were presenting their product, Google, to the investors, they were showing the amount of traction, the amount of people that was accessing their system per day, and the amount of new guys per day that they were getting. So th that was huge. Even if they were selling nothing and just putting money into servers, into programmers, into all this, their, their business has had this potential, and they can show that a lot of people was interested on in this. Okay, so that's what I mean when your product has traction, when you are demonstrating that it's a good product that can generate revenue in the future. Because at the end, it only it's only about this. It's about being able to generate revenue. Then uh, if you are at that point, then you go to the investors, you do your presentations. We'll see how to do all that in future chapters. But then, yeah, so in order to get the money, in general, the investors do not care very much about your business. They don't care if you are selling posits, if you are selling candles, or if you want to do, I don't know, summaries of books. They don't care anything. And what I don't like of investors is that they... Just think of you and your business as a piece in their business game. So they may impose you hard conditions for the investment and will treat your startup as another piece in their portfolio, which means that if they have to sacrifice that piece for a greater win for them, they will. So uh, take care with them. Okay. So I'm not telling you that you don't go to the investors. Many startup companies in robotics, they, they have gone through that path. And well, you can see them successful. I don't know how they run in the inside, so how the things are going in the inside, but we can see them there. And yeah, so they are managing this in some way or another. So then if you want to go on that direction, especially, for example, for hardware companies, 
that need a lot of money to build something, even the simplest thing, because robotics is very expensive, okay? Then go into that direction, show them your results, the potential, and then get the money. But then you will have to be prepared to manage the investors very short. Okay, so that's another task for the founders to manage them. Okay, so that's how you get investors money and then you go on different rounds of investors in case that you need more more money so the investors money is is used in order to scale your business idea that means that your idea has been already demonstrated that works but now you have to scale to make it massive to reach massive amounts of public there and then start winning a lot of money so that's why you are requesting the investors money and maybe sometimes with one round of investment is not enough so maybe you will need more rounds then well that's possible then you have to show to the next round of investors you have to show the results that you got with the first round of investment and the proposal for the next round and then so and then engage them into that and make them happy so as a summary for general path of investment uh, is, works as follows. First, you get some initial money from fools, friends, and family to build some pre-idea. Then you use the good results of that pre-idea to show to business angels that will help you build the product to another level of results. Then with the results, you show to investors that there is success and that in order to win millions, you need their money to scale. And then they invest in you several rounds. One or several, it depends. Okay, so that's basically how you get money to create your robotics startup. But yet, there is another option, which is called bootstrapping. What is bootstrapping? It means to focus on generating revenue from your product from the very beginning. From the very beginning, from the minimum viable product. And then use that money to pay your salaries and, and expenses and everything that you, your startup needs. And then use this to grow. You know, it's like a, a, it would be like you cultivating your own food. And then you eat in order so you can cultivate more larger areas of land and then get more food. And then you eat that food and then you can cultivate more areas and then you can sell those to other people and so on. So that would be the bootstrapping process. And the bootstrapping has its advantages and, and drawbacks. As advantages, well, you don't need to dedicate time to get money to find money from investors, that that is super time consuming, is very, very time consuming. So you, if you want to go after investors, you don't, don't you think that you can go and send a PDF and that's all? No, no. Well, that's a lot of work to be done. Basically for months, you will not be able to be working on your startup, just on looking for money. We'll discuss about that in, in when we discuss about how to go for the investors, okay? Because still, it's not the, the point here. We are starting our startup yet. So you don't need that. But yeah, so bootstrapping has the advantage that you don't have to dedicate this time to getting money. And also, any money that you have, you will not own to somebody else. So you can instead dedicate your time to build a business. Bootstrapping, you can do it if you have a certain a minimum amount of money or you dedicate as a side project. You, you start your startup as a side project from your normal job. And then, uh, the, yeah, so you generate a little bit of money. Then maybe one of the persons of the team can leave 
his job and dedicate continuously to the company because you are generating enough to pay one salary. And then uh, you generate more and then another person of the team can leave his job and get into the startup again and so on and so on. And another advantage of the bootstrap is you don't have to be dealing with investors that doesn't care about your business. And that's very cool. <laughs> that's very cool because, I mean, your business, your startup is your baby. And so you want to deal with people that care about that. That's, that's a drawback of investors, for, for me, at least, for me. So in this case, if you bootstrap, you don't have this problem. And you are basically free. Because you owe nothing to anybody. Well, maybe to your fools and friends and family. If you got some money at the beginning, maybe. But they are the people that love you. So they don't attach you. They, they let you free. Then disadvantages. You are going to grow slower, for sure. You, are, uh, you, you cannot be doing this, those things very fast. It's not possible to bootstrap very fast uh, because generating money takes time, takes takes a lot of time. But everything that you are generating belongs to you. Everything. And it's more solid. I mean, it's based on something that you have built and you are delivering to the world. And the world is recognizing that value. That cannot go out from one day to another. Like the investor's money, that it can well, as disadvantages, you are going to grow slower and because of that, you are in the danger that another company builds the same product than, than you faster because they have more resources, they have investors. Just as an example, bootstrapping is the method that we used at the construct. We try the investment thing and then I discover while trying to do this, all those things that I have mentioned before, and I didn't like. And also I talked to other uh, owners of robotics startups that you probably know them, but I cannot mention here because of uh, it was private and their opinions were very, very bad. So I decided that we better try with the bootstrapping. And with bootstrapping, it's, a, it's, it's hard because you have to be fighting all the time to get enough customers to pay the expenses of the company and then use this to grow and so on and so on. But well, so here we are. And then uh, let me remind you, I have explained the options. I have explained what I have done, but based on my circumstances. So yours circumstances could be different. That's why I'm explaining you all the options. So you you should take the one that is the best for you based on your circumstances and your preferences, of course. Then, as a conclusion, the main point that you have to take home is that uh, no investors will invest in your idea, whatever is your idea. They will invest in some early implementation of your idea that already has shown potential in some way or another. And because of that, starting a startup is a difficult point. You need to cut all the expenses to the minimum, uh, to the min I mean, cut to the maximum. <laughs> so you got the minimum expenses and ask for some money to the people that is close to you. Then use that money very wisely with all the care of the world to demonstrate that your idea is able to generate the money, to generate a business, to generate revenue. So yeah, that's the goal of that money is to build a business. Is, sorry, it's not to build a business, but to demonstrate to investors that your idea has real potential and uh, to succeed. And to succeed here means to win in the market, in a market size of billions of dollars. In the next episode, we'll talk about the methodology for building the minimum viable product that I have been talking here along the episode. 
And it, so we'll learn how to build this minimum viable product that will validate your idea or not and lead you to the next phase. Okay, so that's all for today. And uh, then before finishing the episode, let me tell you that we have the Ross Developers Day conference in about one month. And in the Ross Developers Day conference, we are having a very, very special conference. It's the fourth year of this conference that we organize this conference. And we invite Ross experts from around the world to come and give us a lesson, teach us something about Ross. They're going to teach us and also we are going to practice online with the projects that they are going to deliver. It's super interesting because they are going to talk about many different things, uh, Ross2, navigation, autonomous cars, federated learning in the edge, and many other subjects and you are going to be practicing so it's not just that to listen to a guy but being doing it because he's going to provide us with a project that we will be using during the conference at the same time it's a ROS project with simulations and so on so really I recommend you that you come to the conference and also we have a lot of fun because we like to laugh and to be to have a fun time and also a hard time because it's 12 hours straight. Well, I mean, we do a pause to go to the to have some lunch and also a, a couple of coffee breaks. But it's 12 hours from well, uh, depends on your time zone. But basically, it's 12 hours straight of one after another. So I recommend you that you don't miss this opportunity. Uh, there are a lot of prizes also, and uh, we have some surprises as well for the attendance. So I hope that to meet you there and have a lot of fun. Thank you very much. That's all. See you the next week with a no new lesson from the experts. And until then, keep pushing your raw learning. Podcast.